This is Japan Hockey with your hosts, Peter Wojernoff and Paul Swinback. Welcome to Glam Hockey, folks. I'm your host, Peter Wojernoff. You can find me on Twitter, at Russian98, and I'm with... Paul Zwambag. You can find me at Zwambag, Z-W-A-M-B-A-G. How's it going, everybody? Peter, what's up? You know, getting ready for the holidays. I actually, I'm not one of those guys that it's like, it's two days away from Christmas, which means I've got another day to get Christmas presents shopping started. I'm not one of those, this year at least. I finished wrapping and doing all the presents which I think I overspent, as per usual every year, like a week ago. So I'm ready. I'm nice. ready for this thing. Nice. I finished the... everything on Tuesday, so nice. we're both ahead of the That's game. Perfect. Glad I'm ahead of the game because, again, I think I've told everybody as well, I'm working nonstop. They added more shifts to me in January. So I think I've mentioned before, I'm I think I, I'm off today, obviously. I had to, to do the podcast because we couldn't do it last week. And, again, we're on a hiatus next week. Because I'm working 10 of 11 days. I just got more shifts. So that means I'm going to be working 15 of 17 days starting tomorrow. It's insane. You're also busy, right, Paul? I'm headed to Ottawa for New Year's. So, nice. yeah, it's a big celebration on Parliament Hill. They're going to have huge fireworks because it's 150th year of Canada. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Nice. And so I have to tell awesome. you, a guilty pleasure of mine, I don't like to shop late. Uh, for yeah. Christmas, but I yeah. really enjoy going to the mall and watching people be ridiculous in a mall who are Panic. shopping late and panicking. I don't, I yeah. knowing that you don't have to sit in lines, you don't have to worry about doing anything. You can just walk around the mall. It is very fun to people watch when everybody's running last minute. It's quite fun. That's yeah. That's basically what I do pretty much every Christmas Eve Eve. I go out to a mall. You, That's, oh, yeah? You're going to go to a mall like yesterday or today or whatever? Friday, I will be going to a yeah. mall. <laughs> yeah, and I'll just walk around. Georgia and I will just walk around and just watch people and just be like, you guys are dumb. Yeah. Um, yeah, so my only day off, going to go up, me and my boy Joey, like we've been playing NHL 17 last once a week, last two weeks. We're going to go up to Sudbury and see our buddy Jay. I think that's a pretty good day to spend on my one of my random days off that I have this holidays and so it's good to see my buddies and of course for a few hours that I'm off on this weekend for Christmas I get to spend a few hours with my family and my sister's coming down Anna so that'll be good and how much family are you going to be with uh I have my father-in-law coming down for a week and then yeah. boxing day I'm heading out to my mom's family Christmas and I've already went to two Christmases, so I'm I'm about halfway done my Christmases. I have about six or seven that I that I have to attend. So yeah, that's what happens nice. when you got a big family. So yeah, yeah, I got family coming, going to see family. Yeah, it's gonna be good holidays. Yeah, that's always good. And then I the thing I liked about growing up and doing being Serbian as well, we had the Serbian Orthodox Christmas. Which is in like a week and a half, two weeks later. So growing up, I used to get like one Game Boy game on, you know, our Christmas now for, you know, Canada and the eastern side of the world here. And then the western side or whatever, you know, in two weeks, I get another game. So it was great growing up, having two Christmases. That's, so that's, do something. That's kind of kind of nice to, that's a good way of doing it. I want to become Serbian. Yeah, well, any other, even, you know, the... Uh, Mandarin people, or you know, they they also have theirs later. A lot of people have theirs later. Hanukkah, later. Hanukkah's started, I believe. Yeah, well, they get do they get a gift every twelve days, or what is it? Every day for twelve days. <laughs> it's that would be insane. I don't know. But I'm very ig- I'm like... very ignorant to a lot of other cultures' celebrations. It's quite awful. I should be more educated on that kind of stuff. I, I enjoy hearing about all of them. And yeah, they got their they got their candles, so uh, they get to, to light it. And it's good, good for them. Yeah. Uh, so Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everybody. And of course, that's we'll be on hiatus next week. So we'll see you in two weeks. And I'll, I'll, that also means we will not be doing Saturday's picks this week. Uh, 
because it's of course NBA's day. It's not the hockey day. We got I think it's Saturday, Sunday, and Monday off for the NHL players. Yeah, uh, and that's... I'm pretty sure the NFL took over Christmas Eve. They have all yeah. their games on Christmas Eve. So, yeah, so it's sad for me. And is it is it just me, Paul, or do the World Juniors you sometimes have games on Christmas Day or no? No, never. They always okay. start Boxing Day. Boxing Day. Okay. Yeah. I thought maybe preliminary game or something they used to have maybe in Canada. I couldn't remember, but I thought I remembered having some kind of hockey on Christmas. No, nope. preliminary but... games finish up Friday, I believe, is the last yeah, this year, set yeah. of games. I yeah. So that's what we have this episode. Uh, we have first the Team ISO, Carolina Hurricanes, with special guest Kyle Morton. Uh, Paul will give us a uh, Jablam Junior Hockey update, which means talking a little bit about Team Canada's roster and a few other team rosters in the tournament. I've got some suspensions I'd like to talk about. Hasn't been last week, but there were a few a few weeks ago. So I get to talk about that. Yay. Yay. Fantasy up and down. <laughs> yes. Fantasy up and down. Paul has a few there for us. And then maybe we'll even have a friendly bet to finish off the Ooh, episode. Exciting. All right. First. Trending now. First, we're going to talk about what's going on with the Pittsburgh. Uh, sorry. I want to talk about Pittsburgh because they're playing well. But no, what's going on with the Jets? Is Paul Maurice on the hot seat? So I was watching uh, That's Hockey, and I've even been seeing, even in the last few weeks, talk, people talking about Paul Maurice. And on That's Hockey tonight, both Steve Simmons and Craig Button said it's time to fire Paul Maurice. And I guess that's what a lot of people talk about when you lose a game, maybe 4-1 to to the Canucks. I don't know. What do you think, Paul? They're, they're only I guess, two points yeah. out of the playoffs. I, I, yeah. I don't think – I think that's cutting cutting the string too short. I, I don't think they should have to do anything right now. Like, it's still – we're not even halfway done the season. And they're only two points out and you want to fire the coach? That's that's kind of what I'm thinking. I still think he's a good coach, but after the game too, I think it was was it Wheeler, and he pretty much said we don't have like a focus, a goal focus for the team. It seems like the players seem like they're lost. They don't know exactly what their goal is on the ice, and when you, when you don't have that then it seems kind of questionable in terms of what the team is trying to do there. Yeah, right? I guess if you're saying that, maybe. But it maybe lost the, the dressing room, so maybe Chevaldeoff will have to make a move because of that yeah. reason. On ice play, I I don't think they're terrible. They're two games under yeah. 500, but... Yeah, that's, that's not saying much because when you're two games under 500, again... You're looking at stats and counting the losses in overtime as a tie. They're not ties. Those are losses. So I like to merge those two stats together. I guess you you really shouldn't because those are still points. But when you merge those two together, they're not two games under 500, are they? No, they're. I would. I would do it four and a half, three and a half games. You half the overtime as a win loss. Yeah. Because it's it's. A point, so you get half your points, so you should half yeah. that, that number. I guess, maybe. But, you know, they are they should be playing better, right? We both expected, I think a lot of people expected a lot more of the Jets by now, right? But their goalies are young, right? Exactly. So that's the other thing. You still got to wait for these guys to become, you know, leaders and more experienced to expect more wins out of them, right? Yeah. And How Sha- long? Do- yeah. Go ahead. Shif- Shifley has definitely cooled off from his ridiculously hot start, but Patrick Laine is still putting that puck in the net. That kid can he shoot. Sure, he sure is. He's even scoring so well into his own net. Did, did you see that goal? Oh, it's like geez. I saw. It, it seemed like he saw an empty net. He's a pure goal scorer. I have to score. That's yeah. what it seemed like, did it not? Yeah, he's brainwashed to put puck in net. That's his job, and he doesn't care what net it is. <laughs> oh, man, I felt bad for the kid there. But, uh, yeah, he's still playing good and well, and 
wow, he has such a great shot. Uh, so I guess we both think, Maurice, maybe it's not the time. And maybe she, they should slow down a little bit because their core is, is young. So, you know, and what else? Uh, did you see that, Paul, with the fight between Felino and Thornton? Yeah, always got to look good. Oh my god, this is hilarious! So Marcus Felino, and this is after they already started the fight. They're like giving each other shots into the head they're, as they're clutching each other. And then they pull away, and Felino goes and puts his hand through his hair, not once, almost three times before they go back at it. Maybe he had hair in his eyes. You gotta be able to see. <laughs> and the, it was priceless. Uh, we're gonna, it's gonna be on our game notes. Kevin Weeks' reaction was priceless. I think he said something like, looks like he's getting readier for a Pantene commercial. <laughs> oh, man. That's a beauty. Beauty line and a beauty moment in the middle of a fight. Felino, you're a beauty. Did he win? Did he win the fight or did he get smoked? I think it was kind of more or less a tie, I would yeah, say. Yeah, they kind of just scuffled. Yeah, they just scuffled a little bit more, but that was hilarious. Where are the old and- school fights that like they just throw haymakers back and when forth. It, yeah. Again, the the Ice Guardians is, is an old role and it's not happening anymore, right? There's still a few more in the AHL and some other leagues maybe, but there's very few of them in the NHL like a Sean Thornton. We're just going to go toe to toe. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be very rare to see those kind of tilts. So, uh, Another big thing was Yager is now joining Messier for the second time. Most all-time points in the NHL. Yeah, incredible. So I went and bought a few Christmas presents from NHL.com. Paul, I got my Matthew Centennial Classic jersey. I'm ecstatic about it. Just love it. You know what? I think this is the most happiest I've been, and I have a lot of jerseys. I even bought what I think I even said, right? I got the Ekblad and the Malkin, the jersey from last year. So that's why it was on clearance, and I got him great price. At the beginning of the season. So I'm, I was happy about those. But this jersey, I'm just ecstatic about it. And I think it's because, you know, it's this youth trend with the Maple Leafs. And again, getting a brand new jersey of the, my team. So I'm really happy about it. But a, a thing that I didn't get was I did order the Yager third all-time points t-shirt. It was on clearance. I ordered it. And the crazy thing is I didn't get it because the, it's all sold out. And then the next day... He ties second for most all-time points. So I'm hoping maybe I can get the second shirt. Yeah. Is he going to get up to first? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a chance. If he plays till 50, maybe. Yeah, maybe 55. I don't know. No, there's no way. He, His quote was, for me, it's like number one. Because Gretzky's not from this planet. Like, he, yep. he was just, that it's unbreakable. And so he treats this as he's now number one in, in points. Because Gretzky's just way too far. Yeah, he's an alien. Gretzky's an alien. So for humans, Yager is number one, right? Yager's number one for humans. Yeah, 1,887. Incredible. Yeah, amazing. And again, remember, three years in the KHL. But again, like I said, I think that kind of rejuvenated him playing. So coming back and everything. Do you know what's even more incredible? Gretzky's still 1,000 points more. Yeah, exactly. That's thousand. just nuts. That's almost a quarter of his total points. That's it. It's insane. Yeah. Or it is more than a quarter. I don't know. It's, it's insane. All right. And the other thing we wanted to say is farewell and thank you to David Legwand as he retires after 16 seasons. He played every single day as a Predator? Wow. Really? Amazing. Yeah, I think so. So. That's impressive. Um, I believe so. No, no, no. He I'm was calling, trained. Yeah, I'm calling I'm, you out on that. Uh, I was wondering about that, but no, I think he was drafted by the Predators and he came back, right? No, I'm crazy. Anyways, yeah, Predators, I, Red Wings, Senators, Sabres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've been dipping, dipping into the eggnog already. Oh, clearly. Um, <laughs> no, I haven't. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, 956 games with the Preds. Uh... And that's just the Preds. That's a franchise high with them. And he holds all the records for them. So, you know, with 566 points, 210 goals. Do you think, Paul, the Predators will raise Leguan's jersey to the Raptors? Uh, that, that's a tough one. It's a tough one. 
it's a tough one. I think they should wait a couple years, and if nobody is still close then, like a Philip Forsberg or anybody else is close enough, I still don't think he will be. Maybe they should. You know, it's he's been a prep for so many years. He's d- done a lot for them. You know, why not? You know, why not is the yeah. question. Yeah, I think you go above the trying to compare him to other organizations. Other, yeah, exactly. This and is just saying, like, this guy did this much for this organization. Who cares what Carolina did? Who cares what Montreal does? Like, just this guy deserves to be in our rafters. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I do want to add one more thing. I want to say thank you to my buddy Nilo for listening. He's doing a lot of graphic design stuff out there, but he spends a lot of extra time listening to our podcast. So I wanted to give a shout out to him before we move on. Time for this week's segment of Team Ice. So this week we're Team Ice Isolate in the Carolina Hurricanes. Again, it's where we talk more detail about one specific team. Last year we got my opinion as well as Paul's, but now we're getting in, getting some better analysis from people who follow the club more closely. Better perspective. This week's ISO guest is Kyle Morton, and you can follow him on Twitter at K underscore Morton, M O R T O N 9. And Kyle is currently writing for Kane's Country. That's uh, for SP Nation, right, Kyle? Correct, yeah. That's where it's all at. Yep. And recently you uh, wrote about. Uh, Sebastian Ajo, right? He's playing really well, kind of underrated mm-hmm. because of all, with all the other rookies out there playing so well. He's third on the Canes in points behind Skinner and Rask. What's so yes. exceptional about Ajo and what's different about him? Uh, I would say what stands out about Ajo is the maturity to his game at such a young age. Uh, he doesn't really like have the hype that a Matthews or a Lion did coming in as first round picks from the most recent draft. He was a second rounder from 2015. Yeah. And uh, he actually did play with uh, uh, Jesse Puyarv and Patrick Laine, uh on Finland's top line at the World Juniors this last year, and he was like kind of the catalyst on that line. He centered the the two those two really talented wingers, and uh, he got a little bit of a notoriety there. But uh, mostly most of that hype from that performance went to Laine and Puyarv. But this year, uh, his maturity, his game, just all around game, really solid, really strong. Uh, he has. Good hands, strong skill set. He'll show that off in the shootout at times. Uh, but all around, just a really strong player, and I'm excited to see where he can build on it and take it uh, for his career. So he's doing pretty fairly well defensively, right, for his age, too? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's not, not quite earning penalty kill time yet, but mm-hmm. he's certainly not a liability out there, which is what you would expect from your average uh, 5'11 skilled offensive forward that's a teenager. Yeah, does it help that yeah. the NHL is transitioning to younger guys or smaller guys? The, they're not the bruisers anymore. Did it help Sebastian Aho transition to the NHL because of that reason? Uh, I would say so. Uh, on the one hand, you know, they don't have to worry as much about that physical toll uh, as much as guys would have five, six years ago. But uh, the fact that the NHL is transitioning to those faster, younger guys probably makes it a little harder to defend in the defensive zone as well at the same time. So it's probably a give and take on, in that regard. But uh, ultimately I would say that does help. Yeah. Cause they don't have to constantly keep their head up or uh, worry about getting taken out anytime they're in the neutral zone really as much. Seems like the team has a fair bit of, you know, younger as well as shorter, smaller guys, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How is the, maybe the biggest off season off season acquisition in Turvine and doing so far? Uh, tavo has been good, uh, a little bit on and off as far as his production goes, but, uh, his, uh, underlying numbers are really, really good. Uh, I think he's third on the team in course to share and, uh, he's shown some good chemistry with Aho right now. The two are playing on a line with Lee Stempniak. Uh, a couple weeks ago, they were on a line with Jordan Stahl. That was just completely dominant when they were out there, but, uh, Tara Vinen's playing in the, in the center position right now after he started on the wing and, uh, He's handled that pretty well. Uh, I wouldn't say he's, like, exceptional there, but he's certainly not too out of place. Uh, he's shown some flashes of his skill, uh, but nothing completely overpowering where it's like, yeah, this guy's definitely going to be a star one day, but uh, the upside is definitely there. Uh, basically everything that we heard about him from Blackhawks fans has seemed to be true so far. 
yeah, he's he's pretty good underrated player as well. The offseason move that I thought was really peculiar was the re-signing of Cam Ward. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think a lot of people didn't expect him to at least play this well so far. Why is he playing so well so far? Oh, well, really, uh, he hasn't been that much better at even strength. It's just mm-hmm. right now it's an insane uh, run he's on when the team's on the penalty kill. Uh, his his shorthanded save percentage is something like 940 for the whole season so far, which is just most goalies hover around 8, 860, 870 when their teams yeah. are shorthanded. So I, w- I don't know if I would expect that to continue too much, but that's a big reason why the team has the number one penalty kill in the league right now. Yeah. And uh, so we'll, so overall, Ward's been better, I would say, but I'm not sure how sustainable it is because uh, his even strength numbers are a little bit better than they were last year and the year before, but still pretty similar. Uh, it's just that that shorthand to save percentage that's uh, pulling his numbers up. How did you feel when they resigned him? How did I feel? Uh, yeah. I was a little. Uh, I wanted to be surprised uh, mm-hmm. because uh, I mean, I, I was one of the people who was in the position that they should move on. Yeah. But uh, I wasn't really surprised. They they have a strong sense of loyalty to the guy. Uh, he's yeah. he's been the goalie there for over a decade now, pretty much, and. Yeah. Uh, that that means something to the front office, I guess. And uh, for better or worse, uh, they brought him back, and it hasn't completely burned them so far yet. So I would yeah. say they're pleased with it. We'll see how that goes for a few, what, three years? So we'll see how that uh, goes. This year and next. After oh, next yeah. year. Oh, yeah, Okay. Uh, then I really want to know, who in the Blue H is Derek Ryan? <laughs> like uh, Derek Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, So he was, uh, two years ago, he was the MVP of the Swedish League. Uh, And then there were a couple teams that tried to sign him. I believe Toronto made him an offer and Carolina made him an offer. And I I want to say Colorado, but uh, there was a third team for sure. I'm not not completely positive on who it was. Uh, Last year, Ryan spent uh, a little bit, most of the season in the AHL, got some time in the NHL after uh, Eric Stahl and Christopher Stieg were traded. Uh, he was decent. Uh, I remember, I want to say he had like three or four, five points in like nine or ten games. Uh, didn't really get to see too much of him to draw any meaningful conclusions. Uh, then he got called up this year and started as the third line center. And he uh, wasn't too great his first few games there. Uh, started to pick it up on the power play. Uh, showed some really good chemistry with Jeff Skinner and Victor Rask on the power play. And now he is actually the right winger on uh, the top line with those two. And he's putting up points in the bu- by bunches uh, the last few games. Uh, I yeah. think he's got like 12 points in 18 games now for yeah. the season. It's pretty impressive for a guy who, you know, didn't crack the NHL until he was like 28. Yep, went undrafted. So that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, there's also more guys that aren't household names. I know we have the Ahos and the Hannafins and the Rasks, but there's some more younger guys on this team that are a little bit more underrated or not well known. Uh, mm-hmm. Even Slavin, a fourth round pick, he's already playing at a young age, top four minutes. Yeah. He's playing well, especially lately. What's so amazing about Slavin? Uh, I would actually say that Slavin, while he's obviously he's no Hannafin in terms of being a household name, I would say that he's better than Hannafin. Uh, definitely right now in like a lot of the. There's a lot of discussion in the Canes uh, Twitter sphere, I guess, over who has the higher long-term ceiling. And I was firmly in the Hannafin camp for a while, but uh, every day, Slavin just, like, he comes to the rink every night. You get the same thing. He dominates possession uh, with his D partner, Brett Pesci, who's actually a year younger than him. Uh, and they, they just give you a really solid game. They're not going to necessarily give you the flashy plays that uh, a Justin Falk will or a P.K. Subban or Eric Carlson around the league. Uh, but very cerebral. Uh, Slavin reminds me a lot of TJ Brody in that regard. Uh, pretty similar player. Just you're not going to get much against going against him in the D zone. And he's going to make solid, smart passes in the O zone. Amazing. And who are some of the other guys on this team that you, that are you guys value as watchers of the Hurricanes that are up there that not a lot of people know? Uh, definitely Pesci, Brett Pesci, uh, mm-hmm. Slavin's D partner. Uh Basically everything I said about Slavin could apply to him. He took a really he had a solid rookie year last year, but Slavin was the clear standout, and now Pesci's kind of grown his game to the point where he's almost matching Slavin in terms of how much he's impressing people who watch the team. Uh, beyond that, uh, there's Aho and Taravainen, uh, obviously Rask and um, 
Jeff Skinner, who got a lot of buzz after his rookie year, uh, has really found his game again. Uh, last year, he had a good year. This year, he's been even better. He's on pace for about 75 points, uh, has a golden night, uh, having really good chemistry with Rask because they, t- they grow together. And beyond that, uh, I mean, there's a couple guys. Uh, Victor Stahlberg's been a good find, but he's, he's not a young guy by any stretch. Mm-hmm. All right, and uh, then uh, we also have the World Juniors coming up, Paul. Who we, who should we talk about from there? Uh, they got two big, huge guys, both six four, Nicholas Roy and Julian Gauthier. Yeah, do you got any insight on these guys, Kyle? Yeah, yeah, they're actually, as far as I know, they're playing on the same line in Canada's preliminary games with uh, Tyson Jost right now. Uh, Waz, the big rangy center, uh, skating route, skating. Uh, or questions about his skating or why he fell to the fourth round last year uh, where we picked him up. And that seemed to be a really good move. Uh, he's He's been a really good goal scorer at the junior level. Uh, obviously, that's not a guarantee to translate, but the fundamentals of his game seem to be there. Uh, and from what I've heard, his uh, for his size, the way he plays the puck around the net is very impressive, and that's something that could translate to the NHL well. Gauthier, uh, probably a little bit more known. Uh, he made the Canadian World Junior team as uh, as an underager last season and uh, fell to the Canes at 21st overall in this draft. Uh, he's just your classic big uh, goal scoring power forward winger. Uh, I'm excited to see him continue to grow and I think he'll have a good tournament. Uh, and then there's Jake Bean as well, yep. uh, the 13th overall pick playing for Canada. Uh, I can't remember the last time the Canes had this many prospects on Team Canada, so it'll be exciting to see because uh, it's a good sign. They're definitely they're definitely on TV a lot more than. Uh, the other World Junior teams are. Have you been able to watch any of the preliminary games that Team Canada has played? In? I haven't. You haven't. I did see a highlight of uh, Waz pass to Jost from today or yesterday, though. Yeah, yeah yesterday, jo- Jost is de- definitely on fire, and having Goche and Roy on that line are are a benefit big time for for Jost's game coming out. Jake Bean, yeah. however, looked out of place in the Finland the first game against Finland. Really, he got beat wide two or three times and he just looked sloppy. He did. He looked like he was a little bit nervous, which is expected with these young kids. But I would say mm-hmm. Jake Bean looked the most out of place on the defense core in Finland. Really? And I think team Canada's got a defensive problem this year. So hopefully he gets those, those jitters out and gets back to his really good game. Yeah, that wouldn't, uh, that doesn't surprise me too much. Uh, from what I've seen and read about him, it seems like he does have some inconsistencies that he has to iron out uh, before he can make the leap to the NHL. Uh, but I'm, his his talent is impressive. The way he moves the puck is solid. Uh, so I would expect him to figure it out at some point. But I'm also not surprised that Team Canada is going to have some defensive issues this year. It seems like they're a little bit lacking uh, the blue line prospects compared to usual. Yeah, and cool. he'll, probably, he'll probably play a 5-6 role. So he'll be behind mm-hmm. Shabbat on the left and probably... Uh, I would say Jeremy Lazon might play a little bit more than, than Jake Bean, but I definitely think he's going to stay on the ice. I don't think he's going to be a press box guy in the tournament. So. Yeah. They only have one righty, don't they? On the uh, team this year? No, Dante Fabro, Philip Myers, and Noel Juleson. They kind of they kind of evened it out, lefties and righties. Okay. I, I thought I saw a McKenzie tweet about being short on righties, but I guess not. Yeah, I don't think so. Philip Myers is looking really good for for. That's what I've heard. Yeah, Flyers prospect. Yeah, kind of kind of came out of nowhere, so that might be taking some uh-huh. of Jake Bean's time away. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, me and Paul projected, I think, at the beginning of the season, for the Canes to be maybe just outside of the playoffs. What? Where do you see the Canes finishing this season? Uh, I would agree with that assessment. Definitely. Yeah. Um, they're, they're playing well. Uh, 13, 11, and 7 right now. Uh, two goal lead heading into the third. Looks like 14, 11, and 7. Knock on wood. Uh, <laughs> but but that that pace just isn't going to be enough the way the Metropolitan's yeah. playing right now. Yeah. So I, I would expect to see them. I would expect to see them finish with 90 to 93 points. Uh, mm-hmm. Probably just outside the playoffs, unless like, two of those teams completely crash. Which I mean, you never know. But it's not looking like it right now. But the future looks very very bright for these Canes. Uh, do you see them being strong uh, contenders maybe for the cup in maybe what, two, four, or maybe five years? Uh, I would say it's fair to expect them to make the playoffs next year. Uh, yeah. Maybe give it three, two to three years before you start using the cup 
the cup contender word around. Uh, yeah. But next year, I expect them to be in the playoffs. Uh, the way they built the defense they they built is just incredible, and uh, with the young talent they have coming through it forward and developing, uh, it's not quite there yet. I don't think they're quite a playoff team right now, but I don't yeah. think it'll be too long. And since maybe it will be you know a few more years, what's the biggest hole? Is it goaltending then for that for them? I would I would say it's goaltending. Uh, if uh, Julian Gauthier can develop and reach anywhere close to his ceiling, he would kind of fill the power forward winger hole mm-hmm. that we have right now, or that they have right now. Uh, but yeah, in net, definitely, uh, they need to find someone who can consistently be average to above average at even strength if they're going to make the playoffs, I think. But Do you think uh, Alex Nedeljkovic could come in and, and play a good role? I think he could. Uh, he looked terrific at the World Juniors for Team USA last year, but he's off to a rough start in the AHL, which I guess is to be expected as you know, it's his first year in a professional league. Uh, but we'll see if he can figure it out down there. And, I mean, he's a goalie, so uh, the guys like Matt Murray are the exception and not the rule, so I would expect it to be a couple of years before he starts to make an impact. Yeah, hopefully he, he can. Has the potential. Yeah, hopefully he can grow with these, this young team. Like, there's a lot of young talent here that I think if they grow together, they're going to have a real decent core. Yeah, definitely. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Kyle, for coming on the show. Again, we're going to tweet out uh, your Twitter account, which is at K underscore Morton 9. And thank you again for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Have a great night, guys. Talk to you later. See you, Kyle. All right. Time for our segment of the month, Jablam Junior Hockey Update. Paul, what do you have for us? The World Juniors is up, right? All things World Juniors. It is coming three days away, four days away, depending on when you listen to this. Maybe one day, maybe today. (laughs) Boxing Day is the day that it all begins. I'm so pumped. It's going to be awesome. Where do you want to start? Is everybody playing Boxing Day? I'm pretty sure everybody plays Boxing Day. But Canada is playing against Russia. Yeah, it's going to be awesome at, I believe, 7 o'clock. I think they're the primetime game. And I, I'm going to say not every, I'm going to say not everybody plays. I, I think just the top teams like Sweden plays, Finland plays, U.S. will play, Canada plays, Russia plays. I'm not yeah. sure about like Latvia and Switzerland. I don't know if they're all playing or not. Mm-hmm. So where do you want to start, Peter? What do you want to? Oh, I'm going to give you a players to watch when you're sitting down on your couch. Guys that are going to stand out on the ice or who you want to watch. Where do you want to start? Well, I do want to start uh, out with Team USA, and they made some cuts today, right? They did make some cuts and some pretty big cuts. I blown away. Like this morning, I had to double check Bob McKenzie to make sure that he didn't have a fake account. Mm-hmm. Double checked it. Logan it's Brown and Alex DeBrinket cut. Wow! Like just you're a big fan of DeBrinket, right? To bring it second in OHL goal scoring, 30 goals in 28 games played, 60 points over those 28 games. T- Team USA doesn't need them, just like they didn't need good goal scorers during the tournament that we just had for the World Cup of Hockey, basically. Yeah, they didn't they... need good goal scorers there. They don't need them now, right, Paul? Did they not learn anything from that? You take your best 12 players, best 16 yep. players, like just the best, not this who's good, who's not good. It's such a short tournament that chemistry is is going to find itself. If you're going to go to the gold medal, you're going to find chemistry with your top talent. And yep. I can't believe they left to bring it. Or Logan Brown. He was drafted 11th overall for Ottawa last year. Yeah. How do they, how do they leave these guys off? Mm-hmm. But a guy to watch for Team USA, Jeremy Bracco, plays for the Kitchener Rangers. Yeah. He is going to be awesome to watch, drafted by Toronto. He's going to be right. fun. Yeah, he'll be good. Uh, then who do you have for some of the other countries? We got, uh, I think there's a, in the Belt Center on Monday, there's Sweden versus Denmark. So who do you have for Sweden? Sweden, uh, Alex Nylander, William's yep. brother. He's back for another year of World Juniors. Buffalo yeah. has given the right or given him to his team. He was playing in Rochester in the AHL. He, underage or playing in the AHL because he was 
playing in the Swedish league, there's that weird rule that he's allowed to go play AHL, but if he was North yeah. American, he wouldn't be able to. He'd have to stay in junior. So he was yeah, yeah. allowed to go play in the AHL. I'm pretty sure he's going to lead Sweden in scoring. He might even lead the, the tournament in scoring. He's yeah. that good. He was he was outstanding last year. Yeah, and another kid, 2018 draft eligible. So this is two years away. Yep. Rasmus Dahlin. Defenseman, he's being compared to Eric Carlson, which is wow. which is mind blowing because Carlson was drafted end of first round, I think, or tenth or fifteenth. This kid's going to be a one or two pick in twenty eighteen. Wow! Yeah, he's twenty eighteen. Yeah, two years away. He's going to be good. So watch out for Dulleen and Timothy Lilgren got left yes. off the team. Wow! All not right. e- not even there. He's he's 2017 eligible, and they didn't even bring him. So this Rasmus Dahlin is is remarkable to play outplay Lilgren for that that roster wow. spot. Wow, and it's pretty crazy. I think I was telling Paul before we started our podcast that yes, in my NHL 17 franchise mode, the Leafs won the cup. Woohoo! But then I also trade all the vets like JVR. So I ended up getting a a pick from the Rangers and the Sabres and I won the lottery and my other pick moved up. So I ended up taking Patrick, Nolan Patrick first. And with my fourth pick, I took Lilligren. Wow. I can't wait for my team in a few years. They'll be even better for Leafs, but go on. Who else do we have for some of these other teams? Uh, Do you have anybody for the later game in the belt center checks and versus Finland? Who do you have for checks? Checks their goaltender Daniel Vladar. He is going to steal a game. He's he's able to steal a game, and he's going to steal one of these if Czech have any chance at meddling or moving into the semis or quarterfinals. So Daniel Vladar is a guy that has got to be on the top of his game if Czech wants to go anywhere. Uh, little defenseman Philip Hronik, five yeah. ten, hundred and forty five pounds. This kid is tiny. Wow. But Check didn't take him last year. I don't think he was there last year. Maybe he yeah. was, but they told him to to work on his defensive game. He's definitely done that. He plays for Saginaw Spirit, and I think he's going to do a pretty good job. He he's not going to take anybody out. He's a tiny little guy, but that's where the game is going with little guys. Yeah. So, yeah, more space for them. Yeah, and then Team Finland that you said they were going up against Team Finland. Finland. Two 2017 draft eligible guys, Eli Tolvanen and Christian Vasilainen. I watched the the Canada Finland game that we talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. These two guys stood out. They stand out because they got cages on because they're underagers. But yep. Eli Tolvanen will shoot the puck from anywhere. Yep. He had a ridiculous backhand shot. I think he was behind the net in the corner, and he tried to put it in the net. Like, he, he'll just shoot. He shoots and shoots and shoots, and he's got a yeah. real nice shot. So watch out for Ely, Tolvanen. Finland is a really young team this year, basically because line has gone, Puliyarvi's gone, Aho's gone. Like, they lost all these guys to the NHL, so. Yeah. And the thing I wanted to bring up about Finland, Edmonton is doing it again. Why aren't they giving Puliyarvi a chance to play in World Juniors? They did this to Leon Dreisaitl. I don't know why they do it. They didn't let Dreisaitl play last year. They sent him to the AHL instead. They did the same yeah. with Puliyarvi. So Puliyarvi's now in the A? I'm pretty sure he got dumped down to the oh. A, and he might be back now, but he, they just keep sending him back and forth. Why not let this kid dominate in a World Junior yeah. Championship? That's some good ex- world experience, for sure. Big tournament. Yeah, and it it's not like he's better than like it's just going to help his game i don't know why you wouldn't send him there Mm -hmm. all right so let's go to the air canada center we talked about usa and then the later game of course canada versus russia who do you have for russia it's going to stand out maybe dennis gurianov dallas stars 12th overall 2015 i think this guy's finally figuring out the nhl north american style game Mm -hmm. i think he's going to play a big role in Russia. Russia has moved from being that fast, speedy team to just a bruising, hard hitting team. So I think you're going to really notice that they're, they're not the, 
the high flying Russian teams that you normally see in the World Juniors. They're going to be they brought a lot bigger kids this year, so that that's something to watch out for. Kirill Kaprasov is kind of making a name for himself in the KHL. 30 points in 37 games. He's around 535th overall, and Minnesota Wild stole this kid. He definitely is moving his draft, or his stock way up. He's a guy that you should look out for, Kirill Kaprasov. Those are my two Russians that you, you got to watch for. Cool. And then who do we have for our team, Canada? Everybody, everybody. Our team looks our team looks real good right now. Our offense is clicking. Every, all four lines are are playing awesome hockey. But the guy that's been standing out is Tyson Jost. We talked to yep. Kyle about this with the the two Carolina Hurricanes prospects. Tyson Jost. Yep. Not many people have watched this guy play. He plays in the NCAA, which is kind of odd for a Canadian to go to the NCAA. They normally go OHL, CHL, but this kid is good Colorado Avalanche prospect. He's got big shoes to fill. He's wearing number 17. Who wore number 17 last year, Peter? I can't remember. Mr. I, I then too. Connor McJesus. 17, eh? Wow. I can't yeah, remember. so he's got big shoes to fill to be number 17. Wow. I'm pretty sure Brad Marchand wore number 17 in World Juniors. Brad yes. Boys yeah. had a big year in World Juniors. Number 17 is a big producing number, so... Big deal. Yeah, he he definitely chose the number, and I think he's going to produce like those big guys. So uh, another kid to look out for, OHL leading scorer, Taylor Radish. Mm-hmm. Kind of came out of nowhere this year. He's playing with Dylan Strom and Alex Dabrinkit and for the Erie Otters, and they're just yeah. putting up ridiculous points on that first line. Radish is, once again, putting up big-time numbers. He has two goals. He scored them both in the Finland game. Pretty sure he's playing with, I want to say Barzal, Matthew Barzal, who's another wow. kid you should look out for. But yeah, Barzal's good too. Yeah, I'm trying to go with guys not as predictable to be like Strom's going to have an awesome tournament. Barzal's going to have an awesome tournament. Uh, I think Carter Hart's going to be our starting goaltender over Connor Ingram. He's okay. my my pick for starter, and pick. he got drafted by the Philadelphia Flyers. Yep, they got some good prospects in this tournament too. Yeah, Philip Myers is, so we already talked about him with Kyle once again. Philip Myers is definitely, prospect stock is going way up. Yeah. Nice. So, because we're on a hiatus next week, Paul will give us uh, a little update about what happened and a roundup in this tournament in two weeks. So, go Team Canada. Yeah. All right. Now, time for sus- sus- some suspensions. We didn't have many. There was a there was a while where we didn't have any, and then out of nowhere, within like a week, there was a lot going on last week. So December tenth, Burowitzki hits Toffoli in the back, in the boards, ridiculous. He got two games. You know what? In my opinion, it didn't look that bad, but it was a stupid, stupid hit. He had a lot of time to slow down and hold or clutch uh, the, uh, the body of Toffoli. He didn't. So in my opinion, you know, two games, okay, I'm kind of fine with it. He got, he did get kicked out of the game as well, but he should be on a watch list now for delivering stupid hits. Uh, Toffoli came on and said, I knew I was fine, but I felt bad because my mom was freaking out. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> okay, December 11th, Jamie Alexiak, or as we like to call him, Penny's big brother, hits Van Velde high on the Flyers. He gets two games for in my opinion, being too tall. Seriously, in my mind, it's not a suspension at all. He was just going for a clean hit, but because Jamie's so high, Van Veldy's head was near his elbow area in the hit of the follow-through. He made contact with the body, but as well as the head. So that's why he's getting two games, in my opinion, just for being too tall. Even Lindy Ruff said, it's not a bad hit. Problem is, he's a big man and might have caught him a little bit high. I didn't even notice the hit basically during the game is what he said all right moving on december 16th cody eakin delivers a devastating hit again we're going to be posting all these on our game notes uh from the page from sportsnet where you can go watch all these hits this was ridiculous i mean what was he thinking he speeds up so he's charging he lifts off on the ground technically more charging and raises his forearm and almost delivers an elbow 
directly, so an elbow, that's an elbowing penalty, put it in there, and delivers it right into his head. Headshot penalty. What? So he got, he got eight minutes of penalties. Yeah, he should have. He should, well, he should have got five minutes for each one infraction. And on top of this, it's Lundqvist. It's Hank. He's a goaltender. You're going demolishing a goaltender in his head? Oh, my goodness. So Eakins gets four games for this one. In my opinion, he should have got more. But I know, again, technically he got the misconduct in the game, so that's maybe five games he got ejected that. So I don't know. That was ridiculous. Everybody, if you didn't see that hit, you should go and see it. It's a spectacular, stupid, uh, devastating, ridiculous hit. So on a goaltender, oh my goodness. And it's weird because Lundqvist, he was shaking up pretty bad. But I don't know if he missed many games. But he's, they haven't been playing him that much lately. I don't know if it's because Ronta's playing so well. Yeah, Andy Ronta's been playing outstanding. So, yeah, and which is a good thing. I think they've been overplaying Lundqvist over the years, too. And after something like this, you know, you got to give him some days off. So, and then the other thing I want to talk about is recently, half fans again are getting mad that, you know, uh, because Price didn't, uh, wait, I can't, I can't, I can't even think about what I'm trying to say right now. Maybe it sends mad. Sense fans are trying to get mad because Price, I'm trying to think. People against have fans. Anyways, I'm totally lost in what oh, I'm trying geez. to say. What's uh, happening? But... <laughs> okay, basically, Price just got a penalty in the game for his blocker shots, right? A few weeks ago. Yeah. But Pickles against the Sharks, or no, Pickles of the Sharks against the Senators, he speared Carlson in maybe the junk area, but it wasn't caught on camera. So he didn't get a penalty in the game. He got fined after the game. So a lot of people were pissed off about Price. So I guess against the Habs. Because Price didn't get a fine or suspended for his blocker shots on Palmieri. But again, in my opinion, they didn't give him a fine because he did get penalty minutes in the game. So that's, I think, what the NHL sometimes looks at. And they give suspensions a game less or or fine less or more because of the in-game penalty that didn't or should have had happen. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, take it a take a break, here. Peter. Take a break. Drink a little bit more eggnog. Oh. <laughs> All right. Take a breath. So the other thing, the other thing I did want to mention for sure here was we had the price incident, right? So here we have Leafs are playing against the Sharks. Again, the Sharks are involved here. Maybe Why it was the Sharks were... fans. Yeah, I mean <laughs> I don't know. The Sharks fans aren't that loud. But anyways, Riley scores a goal on Martin Jones from the point. It goes in. But it was disallowed because Kadri grazed the goaltender outside of his crease, I might add. So first off, the goal is disallowed. But Kadri also gets two minutes of goaltender interference for this. Compared to what? What Price had to deal with two weeks ago? He got clobbered on one goal, like, well, not totally clobbered, but the, he was way tight in his crease, and the player pushes him into the crease, and the puck goes in, they call it a goal, and they don't even get a penalty. In my opinion, you should, got, you should have called at least goal to interference on a penalty after the goal, either way. Then, minutes later, Palmieri goes skates first into Price's knee, no penalty on that play. Totally in his crease, skates first, it was ridiculous. Price, of course, goes upset. He's already didn't get a call his way earlier in, you know, a few minutes ago earlier in the game where they get a goal and not a penalty. Now this, these guys are going skates first into him. I don't know. That's ridiculous. So again, he took it into his own hands, blocker attack. It, of course, good job for that carry again. But after all that, no goal, go t- goaltender interference calls. And then they call a goaltender interference play on Kadri, who wasn't even in the goaltender's crease and is being pushed by Havelski into his goaltender area. Again, I think it's karma. Again, with some of the dives that Kadri has done in the past, Riley is getting a no goal because of this. And again, that, that was the difference in the game. If the Leafs had scored there, they probably would have won, beaten the Sharks in regulation. So No, so, they still they still would have lost in the third because that's what the Leafs do. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on, Paul. Anyways, NHL rant over. 
this is laughable. They got to be more consistent with these, Paul. I don't know. It's pissing that, me off. That's what happens with many different referees. They they, they don't have a set booklet, and it's kind of kind of annoying. It's all judgment. Yeah, and all right, let's move on. Uh, Paul, you got some <laughs> fantasy up and downs of you for us? Yeah, so the way I went this week was there's a lot of injured reserve guys that just got put onto injured reserve. I'm going to go through them, and then I'm going to give you some – fill-ins for, for those injured guys. So Ben Bishop and Jimmy Howard are two goalies that just went on the injured reserve. Uh, Chris yeah, Letang, a defenseman, just went on the injured reserve. Uh, Anisimov and Galchenyuk, two centermen that are on injured reserve. Well, so what am I supposed to do, Paul? I have Ben Bishop. I don't want to lose him. If I put him on waivers, I'm gonna, somebody's going to take him from me. Your league should have an injured reserve spot that you I'm, put in. I, th- I think I'm already using it, and I don't know. Did they did they put him on injury reserve? Last time I checked, they didn't. He is officially IR on Yahoo. Yeah? Yeah. I checked him a few hours ago, and they didn't have it. So maybe they didn't know. Okay, I'll check that again. Yeah, so if you got Bishop or Howard, put him on the IR. Pick up mm-hmm. Anthony Stolarz, only 4% owned. He's yeah. going to just get spot starts. He's not going to be the, the number one goaltender, but there are yeah. no number one goaltenders out there in any league. So Yeah, obviously. If, if you're in a smaller league. Anti Rant is a good pickup. He's been out playing Henrik Lungfist for probably the past ten games. I'm yep. pretty sure he's getting the, the majority of the starts. He's forty percent owned, so check for him and then go to Stolars. Or go UC Saros in Nashville. Wow. Nashville's playing decent. They're four four and two in the last ten. Saros did get a shutout in his one game or no, he is three percent owned. And I believe he only let in two goals. He's point zero or zero point nine two save percentage. So he's definitely wow. definitely playing well. So how many games has he played? Half a game? No. <laughs> Sorry, go full, on. full full game. All right. <laughs> go ahead. If you want to replace Chris Letang, Jeff Petrie's forty nine percent owned. He's four goals, three assists, seven points in the last two weeks. He's putting up big numbers right now for Montreal. If you can't get your hands on him because he's 49% owned, Xavier Willette is playing pretty decent. He's not going to put up Crystal Tang numbers by any means, but you're not going to find those kind of numbers on the waiver wire at all anyways. So uh, Willette has one goal, one assist, two points in the last two weeks. So he's a good pickup. He's only 1% owned, so a very good chance you can pick him up. Uh, as for the centermen, Anismov and Galchenyuk out. Kyle Turris has got one goal, four assists, five points in the last two weeks. He's 41% owned, so again, not likely available in most leagues. So try Brandon Dubinsky, who's 12% owned. He's got one goal, four assists, five points in the last two weeks. And Columbus is just playing unreal right now. If you can pick up a blue jacket for this current run, they have a 10-game winning streak, and I believe we're recording this Thursday night. And, yes, they're winning yep. 7-1 against my Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, I, I was going to mention that, but I kind of didn't want to as well. Oh, doesn't look good. But the, the Blue Jackets, wow! Are yeah. they really this good? Wow. Big jump from last year. Insane. Yeah, they're only one point behind Pittsburgh and the Rangers now. They're, they're currently third in the Metro. Crazy. Insane. All right, Paul. I don't know if you want to do this or not. Paul was suggesting we do a friendly bet. McDavid versus Crosby. He wanted to go with Crosby. Maybe I go with McDavid. But we're looking at it, and it's crazy. Crosby is a – he's over 24% in shooting percentage. That's insane. Why would it be, Paul? Because he just tips pucks in. All he does is tip pucks. He sits on the edge of the net and just tips pucks all day. What did Bob Barry say? I'm pretty sure Bob Barry said the other night that tipped shots do not count as shots. <laughs> and that's why Crosby's got so many goals oh and, and shots. Yeah, Damn root sports, before. I tell ya. <laughs> you told me this before we were recording the podcast. I was laughing my ass off. I'm like, what? No, they're all shots. This is ridiculous. This is insane. This is why you should, you should just watch the games on mute. I'm going to now watch Rogers Game Center live on mute. So I'm pretty sure they go and relook at everything. Not even just uh, the goals that went, go on that and see if they are deflected. 
even other shots, right? They they gotta check it and see who actually gets the shot on net if it's deflected or not. Yeah, so. but Crosby does take a ridiculously low amount of shots. Yeah, for a guy that's got so many goals, he he doesn't take long range shots. He, if his if he's shooting, he's five feet within the net. I would like to see a shot chart. I wonder if we can find a shot chart. If I find a we- shot chart. Before we post this, I'll put it in the game notes of yeah. Sidney Crosby's shots because he he's got to be all over the net and barely anything yeah. from the outside. No, but we got to see how many shots he's taking in the air or behind the goalie off his head. How oh yeah, he's he's ridiculous. He basically <laughs> sits in a batter's box on the side of the net on the power play and just bats in pucks. It's ridiculous. And the funny thing is, if you actually look at Ovi and maybe even lately, I don't know. It just seems like it's maybe more lately. Ovi's been getting some of these batter up shots. He's like missing wildly. Some of them are going off the, out of the arena, but he, again, he's shooting from a little further distance. Maybe that too that won't help. But Crosby's nailing almost everything. I'd like to see Crosby play in the in the MLB. Maybe they need to add him on the Pirates for sure. But it wouldn't be bad to have him as an extra on the Blue Jays roster. Hey, he hits dingers. He went to <laughs> Pirates batting practice. Uh, I would say like four years ago, and he was hitting dingers. So, kid can play. Sure. So I don't know if we're going to do that friendly bet, or how about the one I suggested, Paul? Three Penguins in the top 15 by the end of the season. Ooh. Crosby playing outstanding. Malkin, so underrated. He's right behind him. And Kessel's still in, like, the what, top six, top seven? He is, eight, he is eighth right now with 33 points. Wow. They're amazing. Oh, man, it's breaking news. So it's official. And Carnacion is going to the Indians. Wow, that's crazy. Whoa, welcome to Jablam Baseball. Here we go. <laughs> Damn, that sucks. I was going to miss seeing Edwin as a Blue Jay and playing for the Indians. Ooh, all right. It doesn't, doesn't, it's giving me the shivers. Not good. But, Paul, do you want to take the bet or not? Uh, Penguins, three in the top 15 by the end of the year or no? Ah, uh, that's a that's a difficult one. I'm worried about injuries. Can I, can I have a handicap if they're injured? So this 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 is waived? This, this bet is waived? Okay. Let's do uh, if that's that's a bit of the way of the how it's gonna go though. If right? they if they miss more than five, if any one of those three misses five games individually, Ooh. it's waived. <sighs> All right, we'll go with it. I'll go with it. I think that's giving you more a bigger chance to win it for sure. But I'll go with it. Five but games or more. Three guys Over in the top five. fifteen. That's gonna be tough to do. I think the Penguins can maybe do it. That's why I'm taking. I'm, I'm taking it because it's going to be close. I think it's going to be very close. But I want to give you the chance to have your Penguins maybe win this one for you, right? So that's why I'm going to take it. I'll take it over five games. Injured, it's a mute point, right? Yeah, perfect. Right. Sounds good. And that's the end of this episode. Next week we're on hiatus, so we'll see you in two weeks, and hopefully we'll get another team so and we'll have a poll. Please go on Jablam Hockey on Twitter. Go out there, vote for a poll. Check even add us on, again, add us on iTunes for a podcast. Listen to our show. Subscribe, rate, and review us. And even go check our game notes on our jablamhockey.com. All right? See you guys. Peter, have a happy holidays. You too, Paul. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Bye.